All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and map our video wall here to our processor. So here we've got a standard uh, Novastar processor with the Novastar cards in it. This one's the Gamma processor, but it works the same way as the Novastar. Let's talk about hookup on the back. So on the back side here, I believe you can see this, uh, we've got ourselves power. Well, that's going to be the last thing we hook up. HDMI, that's going to be our video input uh, from our PC, in this case, just for testing. Then uh, a lot of these third-party processors will have an output from the video switcher side and an input on the Novastar side. So you'll run a DVI cable from the output to an input. If there's an input on your video wall output card, you're going to use that. USB from the Novastar card, the video wall card, and then Cat5 out to our panels. Once that's all set up and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and turn our processor on. Now, we're gonna launch on our computer the Nova LCT software from Novastar. Uh, just give it a quick minute here because my computer, uh, the HDMI is scaling to find the source. And what you may see happening on the wall behind me, and this is very typical, um, is that basically default out of the box from the factory as I launch this software, um, every one of these LED panels is getting the same signal. They don't know they're in a screen yet. Um, the good thing is they all look the same and they all have a correct image on them, which means that the configuration file, the RCG file, on the panel themselves is correct. And so now we just got to tell the panels where they are and what order they're mapped in. So inside of Nova LCT, we'll hit user, we'll hit advanced synchronous system user login, password is admin by default, you can change it if you want, and then we hit screen configuration. We're going to go ahead and it should show up here a COM port, that's your USB port that's plugged into the processor. Uh, I do recommend just doing one processor at a time or one card at a time, even if you have multiple, so that you know you're on the right one. Click next. And then once it uh, thinks about its life for a second or two, we're going to go ahead and just uh, see a couple things here. So this first page, you don't have to do anything with. Next, we have our receiving card page. And uh, sorry if you can hear the rain above. And what you should be able to do is hit read from receiving card. OK, um, you shouldn't have to do anything here, but this will read basically off of your card the size in pixels that that card has it's going to go ahead and um, read any info about that receiving card and, and let you know what's there. Um, so you can see it was 128 by 128. Now it's 168 by 168 because that's what these pixels are. And more importantly, the RCG file that these cards have describes the order that the pixels are wired in. Um, that's the really hard part and the speeds and all that, the data type, all that stuff. Um, the factory should have this on there for you. If there's ever an issue, sometimes they lose their files, they get confused. You can save a backup of this by just uh, hitting save to file. Go ahead and save it wherever you'd like. I've already done this. And then you've got a backup of that. Now, every tile has that file. It's unlikely that your whole wall would lose its, its configuration, but it's always a good idea to have a backup so you can reflash it at any time. Now the screen connection. This is where uh, the rubber meets the road. So we'll just hit reset all to start. And then we hit the rows and columns right here of our wall. So for example, I'm in a four by four. And then you just click and drag. This is the easiest way. There's multiple ways to do this, like pretty much anything in life. Uh, but we'll just click and drag here to uh, choose the wiring. So I started, this is front of screen, okay? And this is how I wired it from the, we wire, you wire it from the back, but this is how it looks from the front, okay? Is just click and drag. This is how the data is wired, power does not factor here. And then a couple things. First, we're gonna hit send to hardware, okay, to HW. When you do that, boom! As you can probably see here, um, once the camera gets, uh, realizes what's going on, we've got a nice picture on our wall. I've uh, turned the brightness down on it so it looks right on camera. OK, um, and everything looks great on our wall. OK, um, so that's the first thing. 
The second thing is that's only sending it temporarily. It's not saving it in the processor. To do that, we want to go ahead and hit save. When you hit save, uh, that is saving it into the processor so that when it restarts, the configuration will still be there. Then we want to go ahead and do save to file, okay, which I think in this version it's actually automatically doing. Um, it's actually making a backup file. I like to hit save to file right here as well. It's going to pop up a dialog and ask you where to save it. And then you've got a full backup of your screen config so that if you've got a power surge and your processor dies um, or anything else happens, you can just reload that file into a new processor and be good to go. See, that wasn't so hard. That's really all it takes in order to map a typical Novastar video wall. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, if you're looking at video walls, you're not sure, uh, we would love to help you here at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Just like everything, we carry multiple brands and we're always looking out for you guys, thinking about what's going to be the best for you, not what makes us the most money. So if you're looking for a video wall, check ours out. Check out our video wall calculator. Uh, if it's not out yet, it'll be out soon. And we would love to be able to help you find if a video wall is right for you and then find the right video wall for you that's not only going to look great today, but is going to look great into the future. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.